All right, Chris and I are doing our evening farm walk and there are so many beautiful things that are blooming in the cutting garden that are only flowering in the fall. And I thought if you're looking at your garden and it's starting to look ratty or boring or like there's not a lot going on, there's some really beautiful stuff out here that I thought you might want to see and so you can take notes. So grab a little notepad. I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. And the first up is cup and saucer vine. So this is an annual vine. It takes quite a while to ripen. So seeds for this were started back in mid-February in a greenhouse. You could also start it indoors. And then we planted them out after all danger of frost had passed. So there's a green version that we grow. It's called Alba, it's kind of white or green. And then there's a purple version. And both of these suckers, I'll show you them growing on the arches. They are absolutely stunning. So you just wanna give them a lot of time like to get nice and big before you plant them out. So the earlier you can kind of sow your seeds, the earlier they'll flower in the garden, but they've been going for about six weeks now and they are glorious and they'll bloom all the way until frost. So that's one to add to your list. And that's an annual, so that's something very easy. Okay, so let's see. Here are sedum. So this is kind of like a standard fall flower. This is sedum autumn joy. Yep, these are all autumn joy. Super beautiful, soft pink. They cut, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of sedums. What I love about them is that they're so easy to grow. You really have to do nothing. They're pretty drought tolerant. They spread so you can divide chunks of them, but it's not like they spread crazily. Like they're very, they're pretty well maintained, like behaved and the pollinators love them. So I would say sedums are a wonderful one. If you're thinking of trees with fruit that's really beautiful in the fall, this is crabapple everest. So in the summer it has green fruit. Then at the end of summer, they turn kind of orange. And then as we get into autumn, they take on this beautiful cranberry color. You can actually eat this variety. Um, it's pretty sour, but I would say if all the crab apples were growing and we have about 15 varieties, Everest is by far my favorite. So those are some winners. Okay, and so here's cup and saucer Alba growing over the archways. For other annuals that you could grow very easily that keep looking good into the fall, any sunflower that has more of a branching habit. So this is a variety called Sparky. And I love the kind of wild, messy, it just screams fall to me. I love this sunflower variety overall, but what I like about it so much is that it has that kind of wild quality. And then I'm just gonna leave it here for the birds to eat and like let it just fade as fall goes. But you can see we've got the cup and saucer vine growing on the Sparky sunflower. Like I didn't even plan this, but it looks so beautiful. And look at this, just tumbling down. Can you believe that that is like started from one seed? Okay, more. Okay, so this is another great, <clears throat> I'll show you three different ones. So these are Japanese anemones, and this is a variety called whirlwind. And look how tall it is. They're these beautiful, beautiful white, they like dance in the breeze. This is one of my favorite fall perennials. Very, very easy to grow. Um, they kind of slightly run, so just know that. So you plant them somewhere you can let them spread out, but they have that gorgeous white eye, but really, truly, they look like they're just dancing. So this is the tallest of the varieties we grow. This is one called September Charm, and it's this beautiful rosy pink, and I love how large the flowers are. And so as one flower fades, the next opens, the next opens. These look like clematis to me, like kind of like clematis Montana flowers. So you can see the habit of this one is more like kind of loose and falling over. And then down here, there's another variety that looks completely different. Okay, so this is Pamina. Look at these. So pretty, isn't that beautiful? So it's got that kind of rosy mauvey lavender and you can see that these guys have way more flowers than any of the others, but they're shorter. And I love the kind of silver veining on the buds. They kind of just make them light up in the evening. So those are super beautiful. We also have lots and lots of grasses around the garden. So we have a bunch of different kinds of panicums. I couldn't find the tag, um, but panicums are great. Miscanthus is great if you like grasses, but just be aware that these guys get gigantic. But the great thing about them is that they keep looking good all the way into the winter. So these seed heads or the kind of grass fronds will just stay on here and blow in the breeze. Because you can see like a lot of the garden is starting to fade. You can see the smoke bush is winding down, the hypericum. I mean, they're making beautiful berries. Um, we've got hydrangeas, peachy hydrangeas are in their peak right now. So this is a variety called quick fire. 
Over here, we've got Bobo. Um, we've got Pinky Winky over here. And then let me show you Limelight. This is one of my very, very favorites. I mean, they're all my favorites, right? Don't I always say that? But this one is a very, the thing I love about PG hydrangeas is how easy they are to grow. So I've also, Chris and I went through and did a little hydrangea tour with all the varieties we're growing on the farm and giving you kind of a play-by-play. -play. So I'll be sharing that with you um, if you're interested in PG hydrangeas. But just look at this, like, isn't that glorious? Okay, so here's just another example of the white cup and saucer vine. Like, look at how wild and crazy it is. These things get going, but they're an annual. So even if they get wild, they'll die back after it frosts. So you don't need to worry about them taking over anything. Then of course, snowberries are great in the fall. Like that's a really beautiful shrub. Um, these guys, I don't remember what variety it is. Might be amethyst, super pretty pink one. Okay, so this is a shrub <clears throat> that very few people know about. At least I never see anybody growing it. It's called Heptacodium or Seven Suns Flower. And you can see how tall these are. So we planted these probably seven or eight years ago as little tiny pots. They probably would have gotten this big in about five years, but they didn't have water uh, like consistently. So they're, they were a little stunted early on. But let me show you. Okay, so they're super fragrant, very tough. Like they don't need any care. And then they have these beautiful little white flowers and they're kind of self-cleaning. So as the flowers, the little petals turn brown, they just fall off. So you don't have to do anything. Like they just keep looking fresh and good. And then as the blossoms drop, they leave behind these little burgundy kind of seed pods. And so eventually everywhere that's white is going to be burgundy. So this is definitely one, even if you could just get one plant of this, I would say tuck that somewhere in your garden because the scent of it, it is just heavenly. Okay, so here's another excellent, excellent example of cup and saucer vine. So this is two plants, one on either side of this arch. So this is the purple one. It's got those beautiful dark purple flowers, but these guys, this is just two plants. This is two seeds did all of this. So definitely that is a fun one. Okay, what are other good fall, here we go, dahlias. Right, you know I love dahlias. So this is Dahlia Florette, and you can see she's starting to look a little bit ratty because we're letting her go to seed because I'm going to collect seed off of her um, because I'm loving what I'm seeing coming from the seeds that we collected last year. They're so beautiful. But dahlias, if you keep picking them, they'll keep flowering until your first fall frost. So dahlias are another great fall garden plant. Okay, so another annual that you might want to add to your garden. Nobody likes flowering tobacco. I do not understand this. Like, I think it's the name tobacco. Everybody's super freaked out about it. But this is a variety called, um, it's Nicotiana grandiflora or flowering tobacco grandiflora. They also call it jasmine scented flowering tobacco because it smells like jasmine and it is so beautiful. And of all the plants that we grow on the farm, nothing attracts hummingbirds more than this. So the flowers open and let out this beautiful scent in the evening. So if you want to plant an evening garden, like an evening flowering garden, that's one, but it kind of gently self seeds, you can see, but the scent out here is so good. So that's one to add to your garden. Of course, we've got sunflowers again. I just love the wildness of this. I just love how they're kind of falling over. The birds are landing on them. You can see all the bird poop on there because they're just feasting on the seed. But just like leaving stuff behind, like the garden doesn't always have to be so manicured. It doesn't have to be so perfect. Like you can leave parts of it, you know, just for nature and just to be wild. Okay, let me show you one last thing. So these are Formosa lilies and they are one of my very favorite, they're coming here, look at these. These are one of my very favorite fall flowering plants. They have the best scent. And if you don't like the smell of lilies, these don't smell like typical lilies. They're very gentle. They have like a really soft, fruity, not fruity, kind of a, like a spring flower scent. They don't usually flower the first year from seed, but they'll flower the second, and then they are a perennial. So our friends at Three Porch Farm in Georgia have grown the seed for this and shared it with us. And I am in love with them. You can see we have a whole like 150 foot row of them, but this one is such a winner. And I have some in our garden over by our house that are over eight feet tall. So this is definitely one, like you wouldn't think you could grow lilies from seed, but this is a winner. So hopefully that little tour, this sort of whirlwind evening tour of the garden, give you a little inspiration. There are a lot of things that you could plant in your garden to have the like beauty and the abundance keep going into fall. Like, look at this. Look at these little crabapple fruits. So I'm always thinking about not only having a beautiful spring garden, 
in an abundant summer garden, but how can you keep it going all the way into fall? And then you can leave behind the skeletons of all these plants for the birds to sit on and eat the seeds and frosts to cover and just like embrace the wildness and the chaos of it because I think that's what makes it so abundantly beautiful.